Welcome. We begin our service with a land acknowledgement. As we enjoy and are nourished by our gathering and community this morning, let us remember to be grateful for the land on which we gather. Let us never take for granted the beauty with which we are surrounded in all seasons and the abundant life that comes forth from this land that we did not create and do not own. We are present to the gratitude and we are present to the truth. We acknowledge the Massachusetts people as the custodians of the traditional lands we worship on at First Parish. We recognize that our sovereignty was never ceded. We practice land acknowledgement because in this country, treaties continue to be broken, land continues to be taken, and the executive relationship to the land continues. Oh, you can't hear me. OK, sorry. Um, we, we practice land acknowledgement because in this country, treaties continue to be broken, land continues to be taken, and the extractive relationship to the land continues. So hello and welcome to First Parish in Brookline, a U Unitarian Universalist congregation. I'm Brad Reish, and I'm a member of the parish board. Whether this is your first time here or you've been coming for decades, we are so glad to have you here. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, however you identify your race or gender, you are welcome here. We have a vibrant and active community here at First Parish, Brookline, and invite you to visit our website, which includes a calendar of upcoming events to learn more about the many opportunities to connect with each other. Once again, welcome to one and all, and as always, it is a joy to worship together with you this morning. Uh, several announcements. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, worship leaders and musicians from Sanctuary Boston who will help us in our worship today. Second, um, for anyone who's interested, I will be available after the service for coffee with a member of the parish board. We'll be glad to discuss uh, any questions you have. Uh, third, next Sunday and the Sunday after, uh, following the service, we will have members of the board here to discuss with any members of the parish who are interested, questions about what sort of ministry we uh, call uh, and how long we extend our uh, interim ministry. Uh, fourth, uh, next Friday, we have the first Friday community dinner at 6 to 8 p.m. in Lyon Chapel. Uh, there'll be uh, child care and age-appropriate, lightly supervised activities for children. We'll celebrate um, Imbuk embark with crafts, dance, music, and conversation. And as always, we will have Fred Andre's great entree. This time it will be lasagna. If you can please bring a side dish, drink, or dessert to share. And last of all, uh, on the 10th, uh, there's a community folk dance from 7 to 9 in Pierce Hall. Uh, all kinds of folks, uh, folk dances to dance. Um, and uh, there will be light refreshments and childcare, as I said, um, at this. And uh, donations are most welcome. So again, that's uh, Friday the 10th here uh, with Marcy Van Cleve from the Folk Arts Center of New England. Thank you so much, Brad, and um, so good to be with you all in worship this is it raining, is it snowing, is it sleeting morning. Thanks for being here in person and welcome to all those joining online. I'm the Reverend Elizabeth Wynn. I'm a Unitarian Universalist community minister and so grateful to be a member of the Sanctuary Boston community that is sharing in worship this morning. I'm here with four incredible worship leaders and musicians, Emma, Callie, Tayward, and Alex, who will be creating music and worship together. The Sanctuary Boston is an evening worship space and space of small group ministry and connection. We gather on Wednesday evenings in Cambridge and in Boston, and we have a campus ministry, for folks who are college students who are looking to connect around Unitarian Universalist values and shared spiritual practices. And it is one of my spiritual communities. I'm also a member at First Parish in Malden, where I live. 
Um, if you want to learn more about us, we're at all the things at Sanctuary Boston on the internet and Instagram and Facebook and blah, blah. And you can also find out about our next upcoming worships and general schedule there. Our next worship will be just online next Wednesday, and then we'll be in person in Cambridge at First Parish in Cambridge on February 7th. I'm going to share now the words of welcome that we share in our worship together. Whether you go to church on Sunday morning or light candles on Friday nights, whether you've, hurt by, whether you've been hurt by religion, saved by it, or some of both, whether you're brand new to spiritual community or a seasoned seeker, whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are on your journey, we welcome you. Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm here with Tayward, Emma, and Callie. We are some of the musicians from Sanctuary Boston. And um, everything we do is sing along. So the words will be up on the screen. And we invite you to sing along. Or also, if you just want to sit, close your eyes. If you want to stand up, dance. Just do whatever feels best for you. Um, this first song is We Shall Be Known. We're going to sing it a few times through, so you could also listen the first time, join in, whatever works. It's our first note. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time to lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time to lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time that we thrive. It is time to lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In 
this next song is Truth Beyond Our Knowledge. The words are by Matt Meyer, who some of you may know. He's a Sanctuary Boston director, I guess, <laughs> and musician, drummer. Um, oh, you're good. Again, please feel free to sing along. Um, I invite you to stand if you would like to. There's a truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a spirit burning brighter. There's a love to guide our Amen, and thank you. Please join in our unison chalice lighting. Nos entregamos y nos comprometemos a caminar juntos como congregación, prometiendo con mucha fe cuidarnos mutuamente y deleitarnos con el amor que permanecerá entre nosotros. We give ourselves one unto another, covenanting to walk together as a congregation, promising faithfully to watch over one another and to delight for love to abide in our midst. There is a love holding us. There is a love
a time in our worship together where we get to share joys and celebrations, where we get to put down heaviness and sorrow. If you would like to come forward, you can share a joy or a sorrow and place a stone in the water. And afterwards, we'll sing together again the words that Alex just sang. This is a stone of joy. This month we had both, each of our sons come for a visit from California, which doesn't happen often enough for me. And each time it was, it was great. I am Noah, he, him. Uh, my stone of joy is for reuniting with a long lost cousin who I found out yesterday was estranged from the family, but I didn't know about it. So I kind of innocently approached them, and we had a great conversation, and we're going to work on the election together. Uh, my stone of concern, need for prayers, my best friend is dealing with uh, some kind of breakdown physically, mentally, emotionally, and uh, it's really affecting me because she's like my sister. So if you all could just send love. The good thing is that her mother and her are coming together after many years to heal some things in the process, but knowing that I can't be there for her is very hard, and I'd like you to send her and her mom love. Thank you. I'm, I'm David Hawkins, a stone of appreciation, actually, uh, last uh, afternoon, yesterday afternoon. We went to a very unusual celebration. Uh, my son's wife uh, has uh, breast cancer, and uh, she decided to throw a celebration as a way of coping. And it's called uh, a boob voyage. I never heard of such a thing. <clears throat> a party. Uh, held at, where else, their Unitarian Universalist Church in Jamaica Plain. And uh, I thought that was so clever of her to, uh, to do this, what a great idea. And uh, <clears throat> after I was talking with them about it, I went home and I said, I, wa I wonder, wonder what would come up if I put the phrase boob voyage into Google. So I did. What I found is that it's a thing. It's a real thing. All around the country, people are help having these celebrations as a way of coping with this situation. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, it helps. She's having the operation in a couple of weeks, and the prospects look good. So anyways, it was a great celebration. I'm Hobson. I'm uh, um, my pronouns are he, uh, his, and uh, I work for a very under-resourced agency that uh, deals with housing for disadvantaged uh, populations. And um, two weeks ago, I, I'm in a human resources function, and they do leadership development and training, and I was asked. Uh, by a director to help um, her group because she had found that one uh, person had posted very derogatory uh, memes in her work uh, area towards the clients. Um, they're really horrible. Um, many of them are very racist. And they asked me to help uh, her group. So this coming Thursday, I'm facilitating a session and I hope to be a good, uh, compassionate HR person who also says, you know, uh, racism has no place, uh, and we have to be very firm um, and 
the employee uh, said, oh, it was, these are memes, they are just jokes. Um, and it, when you look at them, you, it's pretty obvious that the current climate in the country is making people feel like I can, I can post you know, these things. Um, and so um, I, I'm asking for your thoughts um, and good vibe, because <laughs> I ha I'm the person who's going to uh, be there to deal with this issue with the large group. Good morning. My name is Clint. I just want to uh, say, send greetings to Brother Ray and everybody else who's out there in video land. Um, who can't be here because of reasons of health or the weather, we're thinking of you. Thank you. I'm Ed Leckler, he, him, and I have a stone of joy um, just to say how much I'm appreciating and thankful for the music today, which is been really lovely and uh, well done and quite impressive, in fact. Thank you. So it's a perfect lead in, Ed. Thank you. I'm Nathan, he, him. Uh, I also enjoy this service every year, one of my favorite. And it'll be on our podcast, so you can just hear all the music later. So listen up. <laughs> But uh, on Martin Luther King Day, I was looking for something to do for our family that had meaning more than just, I don't know, usual thing or nothing. Most people think it's a day to go skiing or something. Um, we went, and I found UU Urban Ministry was hosting a beautiful evening concert and storytelling. Um, and I was so appreciative of this event we went to. It was really moving, and they got the kids involved, and storytelling, and boy, and Carla Bear was there. She's on the board. And so just with all of you today and that event, just appreciating our network, um, our community of the larger UU area and all that it has to offer to us in so many ways. Um, so let's all get out there and make these connections instead of just waiting for people to come here. Always. It Always a challenge. Madeline, she, her. Um, I look out and I see all these wonderful faces, but I also know that there are some people who are not here. And as a member of the CARE, whatever we're called now, um, more? How's that? Yeah, Madeline, she, her. So as a member of the CARE group, I am looking at a lot of faces and seeing the ones that aren't here because I am very pattern oriented and those faces that are not here aren't here for a reason. Some of them were scared by what when I looked out one window this morning was rain, put on a rain jacket and went out the back door and it was snowing. So life can change just that fast. And so there are people who are not here because they can't be because of the weather or because they are ill or because they're struggling with something else. And so I don't know which people they are, but I bet you know somebody that isn't here. Hold them in your heart. Thank you all for sharing so many joys and also sorrows and yearnings for connection, for all of the joy of family being together, of the power of our Unitarian Universalist community. We're so grateful and we pray for a world without racism and in gratitude for all those who work for a transformed world. And we are thinking of all those who are not here this morning for whatever reason and pray for reconnection and a love that holds us all. We'll sing together. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all we rest in this love. 
reading today is a poem called Affirmation by Asada Shakur. I believe in living. I believe in the spectrum of beta days and gamma people. I believe in sunshine, in windmills and waterfalls, tricycles and rocking chairs. And I believe that seeds grow into sprouts and sprouts grow into trees. I believe in the magic of the hands and in the wisdom of the eyes. I believe in rain and tears and in the blood of infinity. I believe in life. And I have seen the death parade march through the torso of the earth, sculpting mud bodies in its path. I have seen the destruction of the daylight and seen bloodthirsty maggots prayed to and saluted. I have seen the kind become the blind and the blind become the bind in one easy lesson. I have walked on cut glass. I have eaten crow and blunder bread and breathed the stench of indifference. I have been locked by the lawless, handcuffed by the haters, gagged by the greedy. And if I know anything at all, it's that a wall is just a wall and nothing more at all. It can be broken down. I believe in living. I believe in birth. I believe in the sweat of love and in the fire of truth. And I believe that a lost ship steered by tired seasick sailors can still be guided home to port. It's time now for the offertory to support the works of the church. You may text the dollar amount uh, you wish to give to uh, the number listed in your uh, order of service. You may also give online from the First Paris webpage through PayPal or your credit or debit card. If you're filling out, uh, if you're also filling part of your pledge, please write pledge in the memo line. And thank you for your generosity.
We bless these gifts freely given, for they are seeds that will grow and nourish this community. They are part of the harvest of our treasure and our community. May they grow well. Okay, you may have noticed we like to do a lot of music. <laughs> Um, this next song is one that includes body percussion. Body percussion is when you just tap your body in different ways like it's a drum. Um, so I'm going to teach you both the body percussion and also how to sing it. And then you can choose if you want to sing, if you want to do the body percussion. It's up to you. So this is the um, first rhythm. Snap at the top. If you don't want to snap, you could do like a flick, whatever you feel free to modify. <laughs> okay, and pause. There's another little fancy bit you can put in there if you want to. It goes like this. It just happens the first time. So, dum. Da 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 dum. Let's try it. Might warm up your hands too. <laughs> So let's do that, and I'm going to sing the melody that goes with it, so you'll hear how it works. Three, four. I was planted in the darkness. 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 Very nice. The next part. Um, you're going to cross your arms over. This is like giving yourself a hug, basically. So we're going to tap on each side. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to kind of go make a little swishy sound as you hug yourself. <laughs> OK, so I'll sing it. We'll start with the tapping. I feel the dark. It brings me light. I feel the dark, it brings me light. Nice, so those are the two parts. I'm going to teach you the melody now, too, just if you want to sing it, you can mix and match. So here's the melody for the first part. I'll teach it line by line. I was planted, I was planted in the darkness. In the darkness, I was planted, I was planted. In the darkness, in the darkness. Let's try the whole thing. I'll do the body percussion. You could try either or <laughs> just singing. I was planted in the darkness, I was planted in the darkness. Nice. And then the second part, um, let's try it together. I feel the dark. I feel the dark. It brings me life. I feel the dark. It brings me life. Nice. So we're going to do the whole thing through a few times. You could sing sometimes. You could do the percussion. Feel free to improvise. If you have your own ideas, that's great, too. OK. I was planted. I was planted in the darkness. 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 I feel, I feel the dark. It brings me life. I feel the dark. It brings me life. I was planted. I was planted. In the darkness, I was planted 
In the darkness, I was planted. In the darkness, I was planted. In the darkness, I feel the dark. It brings me light. I feel the dark. It brings me life. I can grow. I can grow in the darkness. 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 I feel the dark. It brings me light. I feel the dark. It brings me life. One more time. I can grow. I can grow in the darkness. I can grow in the darkness. I can grow. In the darkness, I can grow. In the darkness, I feel the dark. It brings me light. I feel the dark. It brings me light. Give yourself a hug. Thank you so much, Alex, for writing that incredible song that could be an anthem for all of us this winter season. Our first summer in our house in Malden, we did not harvest anything. We had moved into a new home the spring before and one with a pretty large for Boston area backyard that had not been touched for more than five years. So it was a cross between jungle, meadow, mostly invasive species. And I'm not a big gardener, but over the years, someone in our household has usually planted something in the summers. Tomatoes in red solo cups when we had no backyard and we just put them out on the sidewalk. Hot peppers in pots when we finally did have a yard. And that first year in the house, a farmer friend dropped off a few seedlings, tomatillos, peppers, herbs. We put them in pots on our picnic table. And none of them made it past the drought and the record-setting heat of that summer and the chaos of a first few months in a new house. But we had faith. We would grow things. So we built raised beds in the meadow slash jungle of the backyard. We actually had to build them twice because we didn't level the ground enough the first time around. And there they are, those raised beds, right now getting snowed on. An act of faith that someday we will plant, that someday seedlings will grow, someday there will be a harvest. Who knows when, but there will be one. You may be aware or maybe you are part of the fight for driver's licenses for all here in Massachusetts that we won about two years ago when we passed a law collectively allowing everyone, inclusive of people without immigration status in this country, to be able to have a driver's license. And then after white supremacist groups organized to try to prevent that law from being implemented by putting it on the ballot, The law was successfully defended, and this past summer, more than 250,000 folks were for the first time in the state of Massachusetts eligible for a license to drive to work, to pick up kids, to go to the doctors. A few weeks ago, I was sent a video of someone getting their license in the mail, hollering, beaming with joy. 
One of the groups that is the reason, one group out of many, that we were able to win licenses for all is called cosecha, the Spanish word for harvest. The first time this law was introduced to the legislature in Massachusetts, you may know, it was 2003. So about 20 years before we were able to win it. And it was a long fight, more than two decades, and a fight that some people, including me, who can be a bit of a doubter, thought we might never win. Movimiento Cosecha has a number of principles that ground their organizing, part of what is responsible for this huge life-changing win, and I want to share a few of those principles. One of those principles is that the soil of our harvest is respect and reciprocity, the ground on which social justice movements build our relationships. Another principle is our seeds come from the tree of sacrifice. We honor the hard work of all the people who bring their gifts to the work of social justice. And we believe that our work for transformation is for the collective well-being of everyone and not for personal gain. Another principle, one harvest, many fruits. There are thousands of ways to be part of transforming this world. And a fourth principle, we are one of many harvests. We know that injustice will not be undone with just one movement. We know that systems of domination require multiple cycles of movements for many decades to bring reciprocity and liberation for all peoples. Cosecha was founded in 2015 based on deep reflection and study of what has worked and not worked in nonviolent social movements across the world, from student movements against dictatorships to anti-colonial movements. Folks studied how mass non-cooperation in the form of boycotts, strikes, work slowdowns could transform realities. Folks learned about how providing places for people to live and food to eat makes it much more possible for people to take risks and engage in things like strikes and boycotts. While powerful immigrant rights groups were fighting for licenses alongside unions inside the State House in 2022, Cosecha was in the streets, mobilizing people to protest, mobilizing people in congregations, doing caravans across the state, and bringing folks to sit and camp out and hunger strike in front of the state house. There was pressure within the legislative process and outside of it in favor of licenses. I remember when Cosecha first started organizing here in Massachusetts, and folks were very intentional about organizing undocumented immigrants as their base. And my role was very clearly and gladly a supportive one. Our house got to be a place where organizers stayed. Our kitchen was one where we were often cooking huge amounts of food for trainings and events. I remember very early fundraising parties where organizers shared these principles. The soil of our harvest is respect and reciprocity. Our seeds come from the tree of sacrifice. One harvest, many fruits. And we are one of many harvests. I was inspired and also doubtful. I try to get my head around, it, around what it means to fight for a law for 20 years, a law that is not perfect. We now have to worry about RMV sharing data with ICE. And it is truly small potatoes in the realm of what we need for liberation for all people. And it is a law that changes lives. On election day, when we defended the law on the ballot, my father-in-law was visiting us. And he asked, what's happening in the elections in Massachusetts? And I told him about how we were defending licenses on the ballot. He then shared the story of how many years ago, 
when he did not have papers to live in this country and he had no license, how his sister found an RMB in rural North Carolina, many states from where he lived, but did not bother to check immigration status, or that was the rumor, and how he opened a bank account in North Carolina and got utility bills and his name at his sister's address, and how he told himself and his family that he would try this one thing to get a driver's license, and that if it didn't work, he would probably go back to Bolivia because it just didn't seem possible to survive and thrive in the U.S. South without being able to drive legally. And it worked. And so they stayed. And so he could be there in our house in Malden on the day that we won licenses for all in Massachusetts. I can barely get my head around change that happens over 20 years. And I definitely cannot get my head around change that happens over 40 years or 200 years or 2,000 years that is the work of generations and generations and generations. I try to get my head around the idea of preparing the ground, the soil, and sowing seeds for a harvest that is so far in the future and that is not guaranteed. Asada Shakur, the poet whose words we heard earlier, and the activist and organizer who has lived through so many generations of struggle for black liberation, her words, I believe in sunshine. I believe that seeds grow into sprouts, that sprouts go into trees. I believe in rain and tears. I believe in life. There is so much injustice, always and now, and sowing the seeds of justice may feel far away. For many of us, our energy is going toward survival, to making it through the day, taking care of elders or young ones or ourselves trying to protect those of us who are trans, those of us who are queer, those of us who are young, those of us who are people of color, those of us who are Jewish, Muslim, Arab, Israeli, Palestinian, those of us who are trying to vote and protest, those of us who are trying to access healthcare and abortions and affordable housing, who are just trying to stay alive. Asada goes on to say, and if I know anything at all, it's that a wall is just a wall and nothing more at all. It can be broken down. I believe in living. I believe in birth. I believe in the sweat of love and the fire of truth. And I believe that a lost ship steered by tired, seasick sailors can still be guided home to port. And I don't know about you all, but I feel many days in these times like I am a really tired, really seasick sailor. We won licenses by 53.7% yes and 46.3% no. It could have easily been lost as it had many years before. This harvest of justice and liberation for all people can feel so fleeting, so vulnerable, so fragile. And it may feel like an impossible faith to expect that if we sow good seeds, we will reap a good harvest. And there is another truth too, that if we do not plant any seeds, we can be assured there will be no harvest. If we do not build those raised beds and then build them again because we messed them up the first time, there will definitely be no tomatoes and no peppers next summer. If we do not start movements for justice out of our kitchens and community spaces and congregations, there will definitely be no justice to reap. We have some seeds from my partner's grandma that we keep meaning to plant. I think we're scared we're going to plant them and they won't grow, so we just keep waiting. They're kirkinia, 
an herb that tastes really nothing like anything else I've had, but a little bit minty and a little bit like cilantro. And I don't know if they'll grow. They're from La Paz, Bolivia, a very different hemisphere at a very, very different altitude with totally different seasons. But we won't know unless we plant them. There will be no harvest unless we risk to sow. In some ways, all of the justice we have in this world, all the transformation that we have is the harvest of something that we ourselves did not sow. Seeds smuggled from another land, stored through generations of genocide against indigenous people, through industrial agricultural agriculture, through generations of migration to cities and away from land, and then yearning to be back in relationship with land through seasons that change. A harvest, it may be hard to believe in, but nourishes us anyways. We are one of many harvests. We know the injustices of our community cannot be undone with just one movement or just one law. We know the systems of domination require multiple cycles of movements working for many decades to bring reciprocity and balance to our communities. We know there are many things being planted in the dark. We did try to plant this past summer. My daughter Elena was born in April, right when we should have been getting things going. So we planted late, far past when any farmers or gardeners in the congregation would have recommended. And I almost didn't want to plant that same fear that keeps me from planting the kirkinia seeds, afraid that we wouldn't have the time or capacity to tend to the baby plants, that we wouldn't be able to water them, that it would be almost more painful to try than to not try at all. I thought of all the seedlings I had stopped watering in the past years because of heat waves, all the ones I gave up on. And then I remembered that if we don't plant anything, for sure, nothing will grow. That to plant is an act of faith and hope and justice and risk. And that's okay. And it's okay to not know if it will be a season of fertility or of follow. And it's okay to try anyways. And so we did plant just a very few things, and almost all of it died. And we harvested two very hardy okras, and we put them on the kitchen counter for all to admire. And her song, So Good Seeds, that I love and will sing in a moment, Mavis Staples sings, So good seeds, you're going to reap just what you sow. It's an impossible ask to plant when we don't know what will live and what will die, to believe that there will be a good harvest. May we sow, may we plant in the darkness. May we sow seeds even though we don't know what the harvest will bring. And may we trust that we are one of many harvests. May it be so. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that great message, and it definitely got me <laughs> relatable. So we are going to sing the song that Elizabeth just quoted. Um, I invite you to stand. This does sort of turn into a dancey one if you feel inclined <laughs> to dance. <laughs> You're gonna reap just what you sow. 
say our chalice extinguishing words together. Apagamos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, ni el color de la comunidad, ni el fuego del compromiso. Estos los llevamos con nosotros y los ofrecemos para bendecir el mundo. We extinguish this flame and not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry with us and offer as gifts to the world. It is the middle of winter. The idea of planting outside seems far away. And it may feel that way in the life of the world, not just in the weather. But may we plant, may we sow, May we be nourished by a harvest, whether it's one that we've planted or one that we are grateful to receive and that was planted many generations ago. Asada's words, I believe that seeds grow into sprouts and sprouts go into trees. I believe in living. <laughs> we have one more song for you. <laughs> See what could 
What we came to do for the future ones. So in our darkest days, may we all be strong and give our lives so life may go Thank you for having us, everybody. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having us, and thank you to Keith for um, welcoming all of these amazing musicians, and just huge gratitude again to Tayward and Alex and Emma and Kaylee. Thank you so much.